Hey everybody, welcome back to Wrath Cortex. To spin, slide, generally do things over to the second warp room. Another five levels to deal with. And this is the water area, and I'm sure everyone who's ever played a video game knows exactly what that means. First though. Crash Bandicoot! You've got some nerve setting foot into my domain without an invitation. Don't talk back to me! I'll fix that attitude problem of yours! That's Wawa. The water elemental. And for some reason he talks like an army drill sergeant. That's the sneak. It's the ability we got at the end of the last video. I didn't show it off then, but... It lets us walk over nitro boxes. And I'll be showing that off later. <coughs> so this is the first sixth level. First level in this area. Jungle Rumble. Once again, that's that's an annoying set of boxes there. Just because just because of that nitro at the back there. If you're not paying attention, the chances are you're gonna do the full slide or spin forwards through it and you're going to hit that nitro and die. Those enemies there, similar to the flask throwing enemies we saw in Compactor Reactor. They throw their spears, they travel in a much lower arc, so it's pretty much impossible to run over them. Run under them even. And this set of boxes is nasty. The idea is basically to bounce on each bounce on each box on your way up to that Aku Aku box at the top. And from there you can body slam all the reinforced crates that make up the tower. But I screw it up, so. To be honest, I don't particularly like this level, so I I decided to pretty much say we'd, we've lost the box gem for this, pretty much. I think there's something hidden through here, but the, cam the camera changes angle, so I'm fairly sure there is something through there, but for the time being, it's not going to be that important. Checkpoint, and even though we can't get the box gem, we're doing the bonus level anyway. Because in this bonus level is our first chance to show off the sneak. Pretty basic set of boxes to begin with. That's up for those. Another TNT. It was brought up in the thread that the TNT explosion is pretty pathetic. Which it is. Compared to the big boom they had in Crash, in Crashes 2 and 3, they're much less impressive. So Sneak Shoes doesn't allow you to jump on nitros, but if there's like those metal crates at the beginning of a set of nitros, you can, you can use the Sneak Shoes to walk across them like that. It's a very situational, it's a very situational power, you know, it's mostly found in bonus levels like this. Occasionally it's found in regular levels, but very rarely. But this bonus is fairly simple. There's no nasty traps, there's no There's no tricky sections where you really have to keep an eye on what you're doing, but it's also dealt with fairly quickly. And a lot of boxes in there as well. So now we move on to chase. This because this is kind of a theme of the second war. That we'll have regular levels followed by one of these gimmick sections, or the other way around. The key with the Jeep is holding X to make you go far. Holding X or A or whatever that button is on your console of choice will make you go faster. 
It's pretty easy to control, actually. Surprisingly, for a vehicle in a crash game, as anyone who was given nightmares by the motorbike in Crash 3 will remember. Yeah, the apples will lead you towards the, ju towards the jumps and away from the pits, towards the jumps and away from the nitros. So as long as you're following those, you're not really going to have too many problems. And the log destroys the jeep for some reason. Get a crystal. Spin of the green. Missed seven boxes. But I know where they will last. We'll be back for the gem. Crystal. That's all we need there. And onto the first water level. Water levels in this game haven't changed much from the way they were in Crash 3. Crash still in the sub aqua gear. Now, can you see the box? I've already missed a box. See if you see it. See if you could see it. And that fish did not touch me. The jellyfish are nice and easy to deal with. Quick spin and they're dealt with. So yes, there's a box in those reeds. Did you see it? <laughs> it's an evilly placed box, I think. And it's one of those... And after seeing that, I started to get really paranoid about every set of reeds in this entire game, in this entire level. Just because I figured, if they hit one there, surely they hit one somewhere else. Those mines are an absolute bastard. You hear a little, you hear a little chunk like noise before when they start falling. If you keep moving on your path, generally they'll. If you keep moving on your path, generally you'll be able to move along before they actually get down. But if you don't hear them, if you're not paying attention to the sound, you're not going to hear. You're not going to hear them come down. And also some sections later on where you just straight up can't see them. There's this area here, because once again, because of the box and the reeds, I was starting to get really paranoid about where they might hide boxes. So I went back there to see if there were any boxes. There weren't. Those anglerfish like enemies, once again, pretty simple. There's very few enemies in the water levels which can't just be dealt with by a simple spin. Very few of them have any special attack patterns. I wanted the extra life on top of that, I was Yeah, pressing X in the water levels will give you a quick burst of speed. The spin will give you a, a bigger burst of speed, but it's harder to. But you lose pretty much all control. So if you if you're trying to get, get the precision timing you need for these, these levels, the spin probably isn't the best idea. The TNT crates are dealt with just by touching the top of it, top of them. Since obviously you can't jump in this. Yeah, this is pretty much... It's pretty much like every other water level in every other video game you've ever played. It's boring as hell, there's nothing too interesting. It's filled with tons of dick moves like that. We actually have to go into this bit dark area and pick up the submarine. And it needs to be said that the submarine is not like the jet ski in... Jet ski was in Crash 3, it's not. It's not an additional thing that allows you to take an extra hit. And that mine killed me. Because you see, that piece of that piece of scenery there blocks the mine from view. Dick move game. Oh my god. Yeah, the sub isn't like the jet ski, a bonus little extra thing that can give you a bit more firepower. It is actually a mandatory thing. For some reason Crash ditches his sub aqua gear. And he gets into the sub. So one hit in the sub will take you out just as if you were wearing the sub act, just as if you were regular crash in the sub act gear.
mines. Mines are everywhere. And another another mine there. That you, and you can see I'm being I've become really, really paranoid about those mines. Especially in this section here with so much stuff obscuring my view and blocking the camera. I'm just constantly watching the top of the screen. And here I forgot about the sub's other ability. Pressing square will launch pressing square will launch a missile forwards. When you're facing a camera like this, you can't fire those missiles. So the only way to get rid of those nitros would be to launch a depth charge, which is done by pressing X. I'll demonstrate it a few times here. That becomes mostly important for this section here. It's important to hit these boxes in the right order, otherwise you are going to miss boxes. And I do actually kill myself, so I can go and do these boxes again. Because I'm not letting those three boxes annoy me, and the checkpoint's right there, so I'm not losing any time. So you hit this exclamation mark, or that nitro, and that fills in those three boxes at the bottom there. Destroying the set of nitros will fill in those boxes there. Destroying that set of nitros fills in another two boxes, which are both extra lives. It's an interesting little puzzle, and one that will really mess you up if you're not if you're not watching carefully and you're not and you're unsure why you're missing some boxes. As much as I hate those mines, I do like that section just because it's a mad dash past. Mad dash past all those mines. As a general rule with the mines, if you keep moving forwards, they're not going to trouble you too much. You'll get past before they hit the bottom. Look at that. And we have all our boxes. We have a gem. We have the gem. We have the crystal. And we have the exit. So they go on board. Move on to. A pretty special level. The first loading screen. Leave my levels alone! And Wawa. Yeah, I did leave I've left this loading screen in for a reason. Because it's a Coco level. If you play Crash 3, you'll remember. When Crash opened a portal to a Coco level, he'd just fall through the portal and Coco would jump into the portal instead. In Wrath of Cortex, Coco jumps through. Coco goes and bumps Crash out of the way in the loading screens. Coco controls a lot like Crash. She has a roundhouse kick instead of a spin, which I love. Instead of a slide, she has a sweep kick. She's a decent jump. Instead of a body slam, she has a double foot stomp. She's generally a very cool character to play with, and I like her levels. They're often pretty well designed. There's a lot of cool platforming. There's no major dick moves. I think a lot of the effort in development was put into the Coco levels, just because they are so much better than a lot of Crash's levels. This section I like. That little ring of sticks in the middle, that I believe serves no purpose except to show you that that ninja will disappear and reappear. And since it's a ninja, you can assume it appears around the maze. It appears, throws a sword, and disappears again. The thing is with it, it takes so long to actually throw its sword, that as soon as you see it, you can, as long as you keep moving forwards, you'll be able to get the hit in on it before it disappears. So you go from moving forwards to moving top down, side on. There's a the big stomp. 
you notice it has a huge shockwave, which can be very useful for destroying some boxes and very dangerous for others, as I'm sure in a second. This is where the sweep comes in. That's the only time during recording, and I had to do it a few times, where that sweep actually worked properly. There's the shockwave. I was trying to use the double stomp to get up to that box up at the top, but ended up just destroying the nitros. So I decided at the end that there was more than one attempt to cut out there. So eventually I just decided to leave the jump box to the nitros. Those guys are nasty. If you're not careful of their backswing to the gong, you will probably get hit by them. So you really need to be careful about where that ha where that. I don't know what it is that, that you used to hit a gong. I call it a hammer. I'm just the one in the thread anyway. So this bonus I actually like a lot. Lots of bouncing. This section up here, I thought there was somewhere to land. I was wrong. So you have to spin those. You have to kick those boxes while you're in midair. Which, while it's annoying when you don't notice it the first time, it does make Coco look like a total badass. Not that I believe Coco needs any help. Jump off a box, jump off a TNT, spin kick a load of boxes. It's awesome. I believe holding down X to bounce across the boxes here will actually take you over those flames. I I was long enough into recording at this point that I didn't want to I didn't want to test it. But I find it hard to believe there's there's not a streamlined version of getting it streamlined version to get across there. It bears mentioning as well with the bonus levels that once you've actually stood on the finish platform, regardless of whether or not you've got all the boxes in them, you can't go back to do it, so that's why you see me uh, killing myself in the bonus levels if I miss boxes and still think I can get the box gem, rather than going on to the exit and doing it again. More stomp action. I haven't explained what Wumper uh, not Wumper fruit, apples, 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 no, to no thread. I haven't explained what they do yet. A hundred of them gives you an extra life, and that's it. 153 boxes, because the last one is hidden under there. Again, giant dick move unless you're paying really close attention. Then another crystal, another gem, Crash does bump Coco again. Um, in the loading screen. So on to the next flight level. New flight level, new vehicle. We're not in the crash glider, this is the dragonfly. And this thing fires homing missiles. Holding down X will get we'll start building the lock on. And the idea is to sink all six of these ships. They take three hits before they die, and everything is shooting at you. Seriously, there is a lot of fire going on here, way more than there was in the first flight. The main problem is those turrets you see in the those turrets you can see in the water. They'll be constantly firing at you, as well as the ships that are flying, as well as the um, other planes that are flying around. The best way of, de of dealing with this level is. Just keep, just keep making circles around the island. Keep making circles around the island, popping the, popping the ships whenever you can. If you can get rid of all the turrets on your first time round, that'll also make things a lot easier. The turrets don't respawn, but the, the turrets don't respawn, but these ships do. So it's mostly not worth your time with the ships. With ships dealing with the planes. The planes constantly respawn. 
Another thing about keeping a close circle around the island is that the boxes are all in a fairly confined space, so it doesn't take too much effort or backtracking or going out of your way to get more boxes. It's also a very quick level. Again, if you're just circling around the island, you'll have a plentiful supply of health balloons, you'll have an easy route to everything else. They're gonna have to hang you out to dry when I get through with you! More threats. And yes, welcome to the world's second water level, H2O No. This level. We start out similar to Jungle Rumble. Well, not similar to it, but Jungle Rumble, actually. We start out in the sub. Mine action, lots of nitros everywhere. Annoying, fast moving enemies that killed me more than once. I have. I have cut out a lot from this video, and it is almost entirely from this level. This level is brutal. You see that fish fly running out of the reeds? That thing killed me several times just because it blends in so well with the reeds, it's damn near impossible to spot unless you know it's there. Those TNTs killed me once as well, and the mine again. It's because there's so much in this level, and the reeds just make things so much harder. Because it makes it so difficult to see some things. Those boxes spelled out L1, so I figured there was some special sub ability on L1 that I wasn't using. So, throughout this, I was holding down L1 trying to figure out what the hell I was doing, but no, it turns out it's just a random assortment of metal boxes that's there for no reason. So there we go. But it's time to get out of the water and moving on again. Again, like like compactor reactor, that's the level I was thinking of. Like compactor reactor, this level has a gimmick section followed by a regular level section. Which is nice. And I, I like when levels do this. It adds some variety to the level. But this level's main gimmick is electrified water. You touch that, it is instant death. And that is just as annoying as you might think, especially when you just have these single crate platforms to jump across. We're using a lot of the same enemies from Compactor Reactor as well, so there's going to be not nothing really new on that front to deal with. Same scientists. The one thing I think it is true is, again, like like in the Coco Bonus level from Banzai Bonsai, you can... There is no way through the middle there. They have it covered at all times, so you pretty much have to go around the side. But yeah, when going over the electrified water sections, if you hold down X, you can bounce across the you can bounce across the breakable crates fairly you can bounce across the breakable crates fairly safely. Fairly safely and consistently as well. Like that. I got way too overcautious there and ended up losing my beloved mask. These guys, they're still... I was going to say they're still not threatening. Then, obviously I died. And then this happened. Suddenly death after death after death. Often in exactly the same way. I think I haven't mentioned about the sliding yet. And here's Crash demonstrating his power of the laws of physics. The thing I haven't mentioned about the slide yet is if you jump at the end of a slide, you'll actually get a lot more height. It can be very useful, but it still doesn't... It can be very useful, 
and for jumps you're not sure you can make, it's often a good insurance policy. And I was nervous when spinning those because I figured at this point I've experienced so many dick moves in this level I think there's got to be a TNT crate at the back of these. That's how paranoid I'm getting here. So moving through this bonus. These TNTs. More crate bouncing action. And those crates up there. You cannot get them without the power we'll be getting at the end of this video. There's not enough room to slide without either running off the platform or going into the nitros. You can't body slam because again, explosive boxes all around and you've set them off. So there really is no way of getting up getting up to that without the power we're gonna be getting later. But other than that, it's a fairly basic bonus. Bit of sneak action over the nitros. Again, I'm not sure if it's really used in any major level until much later in the game. So when it comes to that particular power, it just seems like they're, they were looking for excuses to use it early on, but couldn't, but didn't want to put it into these still reasonably early levels. So it ends up going into the bonus levels. Again, these guys not being at all threatening, provided you're actually watching what you're doing. And you can sneak across those nitros. It's nowhere near mandatory though. Again, we've lost the box gem, so just spin those. Spin those, spin that. And get to the exit. Six boxes missed, two of them were in the bonus level. So when you've got all five crystals, the regular levels lock off, so you have to go and do the boss. This is drain damage. Ah! Get over here, you little orange sponge! Because we're going to ring you out. Crunch there getting his one-liners from the, the big book of Bond one-liners. Does sound like something wrong, so. except in a far less cool way. So drain damage. If you've done the, if you know the entropy fight from Crash Three, you'll have a fairly solid idea of what to expect here. Crunch throws a low laser on this first section. In the second section, he alternates between the laser you have to jump over and the laser you have to duck under, and you cannot make the jump before that second laser fires. So the key to this is patience. And those and those platforms will those platforms will fall if you wait around on them long enough. So it is something it is something when it first happens that makes you a very, very paranoid. But once you got the order down, it's just a case of being once you've got the order down, it's just a case of being patient and getting it done. That really is the key to the boss. Patience in the face of conditions that really should make you very... Are ...designed to make you panic. Second section, he adds in that little stop points the bubbles, and that makes the platforms impossible. It doesn't stop you getting thin. And we get the double jump at last. Unceremoniously booted out. Show off the double jump. Pressures of his air guitar. And we're going to let the big bad guys get an arc on. You are making a mockery of me in front of my minions! Not only have you defeated the elemental masks, but you are still collecting those worthless crystals! Well, you've gotten this far, and this is as far as you're gonna get. Pyro the fire elemental will see to that. 
Oh, Cortex, come on! I don't need some flaming mask to help me! I can take Crash on by myself! Crunch, you will do as I say. You and Pyro will vanquish Crash and his annoying friends. Yes, dissension in the ranks. I'll see you next time for when we're going to be taking on these five levels in the fire world and taking on Pyro. Until then, see you next time. Bye bye.